Hey, we're talking winter gloves today. And uh, on the table, I got some of my kids' gloves. Uh, this is a pair of gloves. I can't quite get my hand in those. Um, they're gloves because they have individual fingers. Of course, the fingers allow for better dexterity. However, uh, they are a little bit colder in the winter time because they don't allow uh, your body heat to circulate where each finger is in its own individual little groove. So the benefit of gloves again, better dexterity, but typically not as warm. And then you move over to mittens and mittens are a lot warmer uh, because they do allow your fingers to uh, all stay together up in here and that way your body heat circulates and stuff here in the top of the mitten. However, um, these don't have any dexterity really for your fingers to try to grip hold of things. And uh, this pair as well, it doesn't have a removable liner. And anytime that you're looking for a good pair of mittens, uh, you want to make sure they have a removable liner that you can pull out and then dry separately from the mitten. Uh, the same holds true for winter boots. If you're getting into like really cold weather boots, they always have a liner that at the end of the day you can pull that liner out and dry it separately from the outer shell or of the boot. And so again, uh, mittens should have a liner. These don't, but where they're kids' mitts, they're only usually meant to go outside for a few hours at a time. And so uh, they tend to be adequate. But there's gloves and mitts. And if you want something though in between that gives you the benefit of some finger dexterity, uh, but also gives you the benefit of keeping your hands really warm in the winter time, there's gotta be something in between. And that's the gloves that we're gonna be looking at today. So here's uh, two awesome examples of trigger finger mitts, they call them. Um, this is the US military uh, trigger finger mitten. And this one over here is the Outdoor Research Mutant Mitt, I think it's called. And both of these are uh, really good quality um, mittens or gloves. I don't know what you call them because these have a finger over here that allows you to manipulate stuff when you grab it. But they also have a nice uh, spot in here for your fingers. And so you have some finger dexterity, but if, you, uh, if your finger starts to get cold, you can slide it out of that spot and over into this spot over here with the rest of your fingers, and you can keep your hand a whole lot warmer. So these types of mittens I really, really like because they give you the benefit of both. And both of these pairs have removable liners. So in the Outdoor Research liner, they have um, a relatively short one, but it comes tight around your wrist there, which is nice. It has a tab that you can uh, easily pull them on. And uh, this is some sort of a synthetic material. I don't know exactly what it is. It is really warm. Um, doesn't breathe as well, though, as the uh, liners here in the, in the U.S. military ones. And um, I don't know. Once they get wet, I would question how warm they would keep your hands if they get wet. Uh, now, the liner over here and the U.S. military ones are made of wool, so they breathe really well, and I have had these really wet, and they do keep your hands warm because wool uh, does, does retain some insulating value even when it's wet. Um, dry time, uh, I would like to compare between the two. It would be interesting to see how long they would take to dry out, you know, next to a fire or something like that. But uh, anyways, these here are awesome. They breathe really well so your hands don't sweat. And at the same time, like I say, they keep your hands warm through just about anything. So the liners, I would say, uh, I would trust the U.S. military ones more than I would trust that synthetic material. On the outer shell, the Outdoor Research uh, have a waterproof and therefore windproof Gore-Tex on the back. So that's a really nice feature that you don't have to worry about your hands getting uh, wet. They also have... Uh, a strap here to pull tight and the nice thing about these they come up high over your wrist like that so they would go over your coat and then that can pull tight as well and that keeps snow and stuff from coming up inside your mitten so really nicely designed on the palm they have uh, some sort of a synthetic rubberized material so it's grippy and it's uh, obviously meant for some durability so that's the shell of those and 
the US military ones, very similar design. They have a long cuff like this with a bit of an elastic on this one. So that covers your arms, protects that and keeps the snow from coming up. They have a strap here you can pull and tighten down. And uh, these ones though, they do not have a waterproof back. I would say this is just some sort of a cotton fabric. And there is a bit of a layer of insulation in underneath that there material as well on the back of the hand. On the palm of the hand, they have uh, leather, a uh, really durable leather palm. So um, now on that note, so I'm going to show you my pair that I've been wearing. And this is what these things look like after uh, winter's use, oh, doing what I'm doing with them. And you can see they are finally starting to wear through. The thumbs wore through there and they've got another hole over here. I think I sewed up a couple spots on them, uh, but the fingers are wearing through and stuff. But this is a uh, winner of, you know, out there logging basically with them. And that's obviously not what they're meant for. These are meant, all of these mittens are meant to be going out and uh, maybe spending some extended time outdoors in the weather and doing stuff, but not for, you know, repetitive work day after day uh, doing manual labor like hauling trees and stuff right so that said uh, these held up really really well um, but you will wear them out now when you do wear them out these are about I think $35 a pair is what I pay for them here in Canada and these mutant mitts probably cost three times that amount and uh, that would be the one drawback of wearing these um, is that this palm would not stand up to the kind of abuse that this leather palm did. I don't think there's any synthetic glove material that they put on the palm of gloves that are going to hold up as well as leather. So if you're doing uh, really, you know, tough stuff with your gloves, uh, stuff that's, you know, abrasive or whatever on them, I would always recommend you go with leather. And um, if you're just out though skiing and stuff for the day or you know, camping, you could probably get away with these and be very happy. Uh, just don't expect that that synthetic material is going to hold up to the kind of abuse that I put these here through. So, um, yeah, I highly recommend uh, both pairs. But um, honestly, I think for the price of them and the durability and the conditions I've put them through, wet and cold conditions, uh, the U.S. military ones, I think, are the best thing that you can get for winter gloves on the market. Another win for military surplus kind of products. They seem to always uh, be really, really awesome quality and hold up really well. Thanks for watching. Cheers.